Hey guys, I'm Joel. In this video, I'm going to be tackling all the stuff that I need to get done before the drift event because I ideally want to just get to the drift event and not have to worry about anything on the car. So this whole video is going to be prepping for the day that I go drifting. So let's get right into it. So I think the clunking is coming from both front diff bushings. This is the one on the left right there. It has some tearing and cracking in it. And then the one on the right is a lot worse. It has some more cracking under the bolt right there. But as you can see, the whole subframe is really crusty. And I've checked the points where the chassis likes to crack and it seems like it's fine. It's probably cracked under the dirt and all that stuff up there. So I'm gonna drop the whole subframe eventually and reinforce the chassis, get new bushings for the subframe and new bushings for the differential because the back one is also getting pretty tired up there. So that is a thing that I definitely have to do sooner rather than later. I have this electric fan that came off of another manual E46 that I'm gonna just swap in and take out this clutch fan right here because that clutch fan is known for blowing up at high RPM. So when you're drifting, if you leave it at like five, 6,000 RPM, that blade likes to explode and go through the radiator. That would really suck at a drift event because then I can't drive. I have a bad radiator. <laughs> so I'd rather change this out before then go through this. If you guys watch Jimmy Oaks on YouTube, he's another YouTuber. This happened to his mom's Z3. She had it and they were like, oh yeah, we'll do it later. And then it ended up breaking way before they thought it would and they had to get a new radiator. So I would rather do this now. I'm gonna start off by popping out this air box straight in the way. Unplug the mass airflow sensor. This thing was that loose when I bought it, so <laughs> that's how loose it's gonna stay. Taking this little push tab out. This whole piece just pops off. Now the shroud is nice and exposed. Damn, this is so much easier than I thought it would be. Same as before, just pull that little push pin out with this. There's a T20 bolt right here. Is it a T25? Oh, it is a T25. This one down here. This holds the bolts on the water pump and this pulls the nut off. I think this is the angle. I don't know if I could do enough power at this, but. What was that? Was that the nut coming off? That was, I think that was. Let's go, it was. The fan is right hand thread, so it's coming off now. Damn, this shit has so many threads. Oh, there we go. Damn, so much more room. So now there's all this room right here. I was trying to see if I could take that cooler for the automatic transmission out and get rid of everything, but then I'd have to change the reservoir for the coolant. And I want to do that when I refresh the whole cooling system. So that's going to stay there until I do the water pump, all that other stuff. So this is the wiring that goes to the chassis right here. And then this is the auxiliary fan wiring that automatic cars have the clutch fan and this auxiliary fan in here. So I disconnect this fan right here and replace it with this fan. So this wiring will just go right to where that used to plug in. I hope that shroud fits with that cooler for the transmission lines. Oh yeah, it looks like it fits. Yeah. Should Joel get a Lexus? Hence. <laughs> you want me to so badly? Yankster. I can start piecing this back together. I should probably test if it works first, but I'm gonna have a lot bigger problems if it doesn't work. <laughs> Damn, ish. Damn. Damn. Pulled up with the slippers Damn. on. Cooked. I don't think the fan is gonna turn on until it gets up to temperature, so I'm gonna pull it out right now and just let it idle. It's already so much quieter now that the fan isn't sounding like a bus whooshing and washing everywhere. So I, I'm excited to hear it when it's driving too because it's going to sound a whole lot better. Oh, it's on. I thought it would have to wait to go to temp first, but the fan is definitely spinning. Oh, and then it turns off. So I guess I just need to see if it's going to hold temp. It started at 168, now it's steady climbing up. It's dead center. I'm just waiting to see if this car starts overheating right now. 
the fan is on and it's going but i'm just keeping an eye on it so it's going back down kind of it's not going past 175 ish send us into the woods <laughs> <laughs> that, that felt really good. good. <laughs> that, that felt really much. good. As soon as she comes out to take out the trash. So I must have idled the 46 for like over an hour combined. It didn't overheat. It was good. Temperature stayed good. So I feel very confident in that that is going to be all right for the drift event and that nothing is going to be going wrong with the electrical fan. So that's just one step closer to being ready for the drift event. I have to pull in the E46 right now so that I can fix this power steering leak. Again, this is the one line that I didn't replace. I'm just going to have to cut it out. <laughs> You're going to see why because the quick disconnect doesn't come off. So I finally got the car lined up in the garage how I did the first time where the light is perfectly lighting up the engine bay so I can see everything. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off taking the air box out and trying to diagnose that line right there. So if I trace my steps right here, just being parked here for probably five minutes is that little power steering stain. And if I look straight up from here, there's some power steering on this. And then right above that, it's also dripping. And what that is are these two lines right here. These are power steering, but the bottom one is soaked and the top one is dry. And then I just come up over here and that bad boy right there is leaking pretty good. So I'm guessing that the fluid is just coming out of that line and hopefully that's what's dripping down all the way to the floor over there. But the problem lies, whenever I push this clip in, no matter what I do, I cannot get this quick disconnect line in. I spent a good 45 minutes to an hour just right there trying different positions and I could not get that out. So I'm trying to see to come in with this Dremel and cut it out, but it looks like it's going to be easier if I just try and remove this headlight so I can get some more room. Oh, there we go. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Now I have a really clear shot at what I need. I need to take this top line off right here. So if worse comes to worse, I can. Oh, that's so close to the expansion tank, though. Oh, I can definitely cut it from this angle right here, though. Let me just try one more time. So the thing with this is that you have to push it in this way and with this towards each other. So with the headlight in the way, it was pretty difficult. I don't know if this is going to be easier now, but oh, I need to drain the power steering fluid before I do that. I got a tray under there right now, and I'm going to give this a valiant effort. Oh, it hurts my wrist so badly. I have pretty bad wrists from previous injuries, so I can't put that much pressure on that right there. Maybe a normal person can, but that's not happening with me, so I'm going to try and do something. Just trying to get rid of this old fluid without a turkey baster. Oh, there's still a lot of fluid in there. Hey, yo. I'm gonna try one more time with this before I cut it. So now I push inwards and out. No way! Let's go! It worked! I didn't have to cut anything! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, I'm so happy. Because that only took like 20 minutes. So I could just come in, push the new one on. Here we go. New one is on. Up top over here, I could plug this in. Just slide it back on. There we go. The line is back in. Now I can test it. I'm just coming in and spraying everything with brake clean to get rid of the old oil that leaked everywhere so that I can easily see if there's new oil leaking. I'm gonna connect the air box just so that I have the mass airflow sensor. I'm gonna let it run for like 10 minutes and see if there's any change after. So there's this super small drop right here. And yeah, I don't really know where that one is leaking from. It's been nine minutes now, and it's only that one drop right there. So I think there's still one more leak. What the hell? 
I can't even pinpoint exactly what that's coming from. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for 10 minutes being on and idling and that be the leak that it leaves is better than what it was before. So I'm just gonna finish everything up right here, put the headlight back on and that's all I'm gonna do because that's the only part that I have to change. I'm gonna do a quick little, here we go. Everything should be good now. I cannot explain to you guys how relieving this is to finally have a fire extinguisher with a proper mount that I found. Finally, I ordered this absolutely garbage one off of Amazon. It's too small for anything and it doesn't wrap around any fire extinguisher. So I ended up getting this fire extinguisher right here. I'll leave the link in the description. It's a two pound BC. So I couldn't find one with the A that was two pound, but A is for like paper and wood, I think. I'm pretty sure this is enough for vehicles. And then this fire extinguisher bracket is the one that works. Kitty, durable steel fire extinguisher bracket. This is the one. So this setup fits nice and small, really compact. It's just finally I found this setup that worked with it. So the way that I'm gonna mount this in the car is right there with the four bolts. I'm gonna probably just use two diagonal and then drill holes into this, put some riv nuts and bolt that in just like that. And then I, this bracket is for the E30, but I need to make another one for the E46. Just goes to the front two seat bolts, kind of like that. So this will go under the seat and just bolt right in. But I need to make another one because this one's too narrow. There you go. Boom. Let's get started on that. So I'm going to have a link for the extinguisher in the description off of Amazon. There's that information right there. And then this one is from Home Depot. So they had it available, a whole bunch of them. This is the two and a half pound bracket. So the two and a half pound one fits the two pound fire extinguisher. Right now I have the old bracket lined up with the holes and the nuts for the front. So this is where the fire extinguisher would sit here if I use this bracket, but I think it sits a little bit too far forward. So I'm going to sit it back two and a half inches more about that much. And this is when the seat is all the way forward. So if I pull the seat all the way to where it would be, it'll be about there. So I think that's perfect. From the center of the stud to the center of the stud is right at 18 inches. Now I can measure out two holes 18 inches apart. Since I want the extinguisher sure to sit two and a half inches further back, I'm gonna put it in the position that I want and mark it there. There we go. Not the craziest accurate, but it'll work. So the top is gonna to be now right across there. I want there to be a half an inch on either side of the hole. So this one is at one inch. I'm gonna make sure to mark my midpoint so I can line the fire extinguisher up with that. And then here I can come in and mark the other side of this. Mark the two points on the outside so that I can now just run these lines and connect them all. This top line is definitely not straight, so I'm gonna just run it from the bottom up. Those two line up, so <laughs> I can say that that's kind of level. And then if I keep just going up, <laughs> so these two are definitely straight. This first one was not. Is this going to look stupid? There we go. Now I can cut that out. There we go. I think this looks so wonky because I didn't leave an extra half inch up <laughs> so that it can transition, but whatever. Kind of destroyed this one trying to put a drill bit through cardboard, but that's besides the point. <laughs> it looks so stupid. I should have left a half inch more on top and then ran it this way. That's where she sits. That one is in. That one is in. So the seat's all the way back. And that'll go there. Yeah, that's perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. Got this piece of eighth inch steel. I'm gonna bring that whole corner up a half inch. Then all the other lines should stay just about the same.
So in the car here, that stud is perfectly in the center and perfectly in the center. So I did kind of a decent job, I guess. And that's what it's gonna look like. So now that I know that it fits, I'm gonna take this scaling off of the steel so that I can get it ready for paint. So I'm gonna leave the fire extinguisher right there. I like where that sits. So I'm just gonna take the extinguisher right off. And that is where I wanna mark it. I think two bolts nice and torqued down is going to be more than enough to hold this two pound fire extinguisher in so I feel like it'll be just overkill to have four. Low speed is what gets these holes drilled. If you go in, you're going to destroy your drill bits instantly. So I'm going to be using this little thing, it's called the riv nut and it'll turn any hole into threads so it's really nice for doing stuff like in the engine bay or like on a car that you don't have any place to put a nut on the back you just use one of these with this tool i'm going to leave the link in the description if you're interested in this but you screw it on right here and then when you squeeze these two together it, it crimps around the sheet metal i also bought this kit because these are stainless steel rib nuts instead of the other whatever they use so these don't corrode if you put them onto a car the link for these is also in the description. So I'm using an M6 bolt and an M6 riv nut needs you to open the hole to a 3 8 size. So lining it up. Yeah, I'm doing something right. They're dead centered. All right, now I can paint this whole thing. So I hit it with some of that because I'm gonna use some wrinkle paint now. Just degrease it, and I need to read the instructions on how to do this again. It says to apply three heavy coats, so I'm gonna do exactly that. Oh my God, it's running so hard already. Might have gone a little bit too heavy. It's running really bad now. Last coat now. Now I'm going to hit it hard with this heat gun to see if it'll actually wrinkle up because I don't think I've ever had a success with this. Oh, it actually wrinkled up a little bit. What? Oh, damn, it did the back too. Damn, so the whole thing is just already wrinkled out. All right, so it's 9.30 right now at night. I'm gonna let that sit till probably like 11 a.m. So that should be nice and cured by then. And I'll go in and put those rib nuts in. Damn, I am really excited with how good this piece came out. <laughs> I'll grab the old one just so I can put a, how much better I've gotten. <laughs> so this on the right was before I did any CAD classes in college because I'm going to school for mechanical engineering, but <laughs> it's so uneven. Everything is just so, this one is way bigger than here. It's just really ugly and bad looking. Like, just doesn't look good. And the paint wasn't that good. It was my first time using Wrinkle. But now, it's so symmetrical. It looks so much better. And the paint came out not the best, but definitely better than the first time. Ideally, with the paint in there, yes, it still fits. I'm going to go fit it in the car to make sure I don't have it upside down. And then we'll be good to... Insert the rib nuts. Yeah, that's enough for, to rock the seat back. By the way, for those of you wondering, I did give that little bit of personal info right there. I'm 50% of the way done with my mechanical engineering degree and I finished all my calculus classes and I finished all my physics classes and all the like general ed stuff. So now the fi other 50% of the degree are the actual engineering class like statics, dynamics, thermodynamics, all that fluid stuff. I decided that now would be the best point to put a pause on school, focus on YouTube, see where it takes me and see how everything goes because I'm 50% of the way done and I haven't actually started any of the hard engineering classes. So let's get back to work. I'm always saying, yo, I've, I've wanted to be a YouTuber since I was a little kid, since I was watching Minecraft and Modern Warfare on YouTube. So now that the possibility is actually here. It's really cool. Let me grab the extinguisher actually and set it up right here. But this is definitely gonna work just like that. There's a little bit of room under so like the floor mat could actually come in. I like that a lot. So that'll be the final setup right there. I can now take the rib nuts. 
slide them on all the way while the handles are open. So I just come in with this, put it on right there, and then you just press it. What the fuck was that, dude? No way. This is why I don't do how-tos, yo. Why does some shit always happen? Like, oh my god. Did it just pull the threads out? I guess the problem could potentially be that the material is too thick for the size nut. <laughs> I needed a bigger rib nut for the size metal because there's not enough wrinkle. Oh my goodness. See, like, this is only something you're gonna learn from doing it, yo. Like, so am I just gonna have to send it? What the hell happened? I mean, they work, kind of. The riv nut isn't sliding in smoothly anymore, so <laughs> I'm gonna try running a tap through it. Dude, this is so stupid. Like, this is why I don't do how to's. Just something happens that's like I can never predict. Shout out to Chris Fix. I don't know how he never runs into any problems. Let's try this again. This is such an. Okay. I thought that it was a little bit later than that, but. <laughs> That mount is on there. Boom! Let's go! Look at that! <laughs> I probably should have just done a through bolt and nut on the back, but whatever. Lesson learned. Can't use a small rib nut on thick metal. Oh, it's sitting on the bolts. I definitely need to trim that bolt down. It's looking like this floor mat might get locked in forever, so <laughs> let me just bolt it down. Oh, no, because it lifts it up a little bit. Oh, yes, that's perfect, actually. Pop the covers on, push the seat forward to where it's going to be. So all the way forward, it is about... What the? It can go over the top of it. It can go all the way forward, even with the extinguisher in place, not touching. The seat just hovers over it. <laughs> that is so perfect. It could not fit any better than this. <laughs> I'm so excited. Damn. This project came out perfect, but now if the floor mat can move, it's perfect. It'll realistically stay right there, so it's perfect visibility-wise. Does the floor mat move still? It does! Let's go! Wow, this is perfect. <laughs> if I come sit in, that's what I'm scared about. When people whip their legs in, I don't want this buckle to be near where that happens. So you can literally slide your leg across the extinguisher. I don't know who would do that, but like, just in case, you know? And then in an emergency, nice and easy. So I said it a little bit, but there's not a lot of information on people doing their fire extinguisher setup in drift cars. Nobody says what extinguisher they're using. Nobody says what bracket they're using to mount it. Nobody says where they mount it. It's like a, one of the biggest struggles that I found with having a drift car. I'm like, where do people put extinguishers? And this is one of the best places that I can think of putting it in a stock car. Oh, and I don't know if I showed if it's sturdy or not. It is very sturdy just on the extinguisher at the back she is not going anywhere <laughs> i just got these adjustable sway bar end links so this will make me make it a little bit shorter either if this one's too long i can put these in or if these are too short i could put these on there we go that is not how you take that off but i can only ever get these out with a vice grip holding the inside right there so doing it this way stops it from spinning so this is a comparison between the new one and the old one it's a little bit shorter because now the car is shorter the sway bar has different geometry to where it bolts up on the coilover right here so i need to go in and figure out what no preload is because i think you want to install it with no preload so i got this side tight on the top and bottom just to hold the whole sway bar in position right there and then I have this side in on the bottom, but loose on top. So it comes in and out. The sway bar moves a little bit up and down. So I'm guessing this is where no preload is, but you need no preload when the suspension is settled. But this car is way too low to get down 
and like around and trying to see in here. So I'm going to have to leave it. I'm not sure how people do it on low cars. You probably put all four wheels. You probably put a chalk under all four wheels and lift the whole car up so that you can then get under and start fixing that, which wouldn't be a bad idea for doing at home DIY alignments. Maybe four ramps. Yeah, that'll work actually. Four ramps. I could jack the car up and slide the ramps under. That is a really good idea actually. It'll make doing alignments a lot easier. But for the meantime, I'm gonna put them in just both at the same size. If it feels bad at the track, then maybe if I'm bored enough, I'll try ripping out both end links and driving with no front sway bar just to see what like the comparison is. But I don't think I'm going to be that picky about it. And this one actually does have one end link reverse threaded so that you can adjust it, lengthen the, the whole sway bar end link by hand like this. Or if you want to shorten it, you go the other way. Let me just get the car back together quick. So I think that just about wraps up the drift prep in the E46. Tires is the only thing I need to do. The back tires are completely smoked, so I need to put new rear tires. So I got the car all ready for the drift event. Locked and loaded. That's what it's looking like. The trunk is fully loaded. Two snow tires, just in case if these burn out, but it's gonna be raining all day. I don't think I'm gonna go through a set of tires. Extra engine oil, automatic transmission fluid, two of them for power steering. Water for coolant, just in case. My toolbox, my half inch impact sockets right there, miscellaneous tools right there, and the jack is right under there. So I have everything packed into just the trunk of the wagon. It fits perfectly. If I open the back seat, I have two jack stands over there. I might actually grab two more just in case. And then I have the helmet here. I'm gonna flip those around actually. I don't wanna scratch the back of my seat. Make sure you stay tuned for the video of that car at the drift event it's gonna be my first ever drift event and i think it's gonna be a lot of fun rain or shine and it's 100 percent gonna rain but it's gonna be fun regardless so if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like subscribe follow me on instagram right here at e30 joel to stay up to date with everything that i'm doing and yeah thank you guys for watching